Welcome to Business Purpose and Clarity with Petri. I'm your host. We talk about startup life, insights, practical tips, mistakes, failures, and everything between. What's your box? Yeah, I mean box. You are either inside of the box or you're outside of the box. But you have certain box. It's a mental box. I don't mean physical box in this case. And every business has a box. Your clients put you into that box. They have a label on the box. They sell for you in their mind, in their organization, you to some of the places. In, and uh, that's what they will look for when they need you. When they need a tool for something and you are the tool provider, then they will look at that box and maybe call you. But if, if you're in the wrong self, you part of the utility tools or you the necessarily boring things we need to do and we couldn't care less and uh, we should do these things as cheaply as possible self, then it's probably not the best place to be. And if you are put among those tools and among those boxes, it's really difficult to claim another box relabel it, climb the self to another level. The other day I was speaking with an entrepreneur. They've been building the company a few years. There were a few founders. They put their own money. They didn't have any investors. They actually made quite impressive sales as well. But the issue was that um, it was a really good MVP. The market was really good. So they have proven themselves that there's this market, there's a demand. They can also do sales. But the back end didn't scale at this point, so they needed to do that again. The other issue was that it took a lot of sales effort to close the sales, so it was personal sales. Nothing wrong with these things. But the issue is that, do you want to be on that box? How do you see it in the future? Is it scalable? Can you see this business becoming something which really drives your unit and cost economics work? So you have a business model which makes money is something you can be proud of and is along the vision what you want to build. Because if you are in a certain box, it might be a bit hard to get out of that and rebrand it, have another vision for the company. Let's take another example. This is what Japanese automaker did some many, many years ago, actually. It's called Toyota. You may have heard them. They are pretty big in the world. Some some places also the market leader. They were doing really good reliable cars, but they were not exactly luxurious. How do you compete with Mercedes, Audi, Bentleys and whatnot if you are seen as the hammer? Or maybe not the hammer, but the, some utility tool which is not clamorous. It's reliable, you know, it's really hard to break hammer. It works every time, works for a long time. You you need a hammer, it's really fun, useful. Nothing bad about hammers, but it's not exactly luxurious. And it's hard to bring that to a party. So they created another brand called Lexus. Well, it was the same Toyota technology, but they just branded it differently. They targeted it, so they created a new box that was, from the beginning, having a different story, brand, approach, appeal for the customers. Even though it was Toyota with a new name, and obviously it was having more stuff, it was comparable to the other ones and some extent it was probably better than the Audis and Mercedes is. But that's what it required. Completely utterly new box. New story, new vision, total remake of the brand. They didn't have a Toyota Lexus. It was Lexus. So this is something to keep in mind as well that when you starting with your MVP you're starting to build something, you're testing the market and your hypothesis is approved in a sense that you're satisfied with the response, you 
realize that there's a need, there's a demand, that then you do also r remind yourself and uh, acknowledge that you have a cap. Cap in a way that, okay, this way we do things now doesn't scale, we understand that and it doesn't need to because we are in the early states, but we don't really see how we can make this to scale. There's some issues which prevent us to make it to scale. Maybe there are sales issues, maybe there are marketing issues, maybe there are technical issues, maybe there are pricing issues, maybe they are all of the above. And then you're facing the fact that, okay, what is the best way to go about from here? Personally, if I don't see some way that you don't need to make a note in your plan saying some magic happens here, which you have no idea how it happens, it's really hard to see the future and build a product, because if I don't know how to make it and I'm the one who is making it, who is going to do it? How are we going to do it? Now, those are really big questions in that case. Scalability, right box, and the label are important. So what box you want to be in? Maybe you want to ask that from your customers next time. How do they label you? <laughs>